I invite you to open your Bible this morning to two texts. The first is Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, words of Jesus. And then we'll look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, words of Paul that remind us that the Christian life is no one-time decision. It is a lifelong journey. I preach this sermon here every few years, the last time here in 2016 uh, on graduate, and I preached it for the first time on Graduate Recognition Sunday in 1991. Uh, It's based on John Bunyan's classic, The Pilgrim's Progress, which was uh, published in 1678 and has appeared in numerous languages uh, and read by numerous people, millions of people, across the years, they found it to be a spiritual help as Bunyan tells the allegory of a Christian's walk from conversion to the city of God. Our two scriptures capture that theme. I invite you to hear the word of the Lord. First from Matthew chapter seven. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it. And now in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10, finally be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with the readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Well, here's what we're going to do today. I'm not going to explain to you the two gates. I'm not going to describe the spiritual armor. I'm going to try to help you experience them by taking you on a pilgrim's progress journey. I first prepared this sermon with graduates in mind, but learned over the decades that the Holy Spirit has used this in every generation. In fact, the very first time I preached this, Rich Gibbons, a 50-something man for whom many of us had prayed, stepped out and put his faith in Jesus Christ. And man, did it ever take. He ended up becoming a deacon and a a leader in the church. So graduate or not, uh, join me on this journey this morning. Listen for the Spirit's promptings and act on whatever God leads you to do today. Let's let's go. Uh, My name is Pilgrim, and I have a story to tell. It begins at a fork in the road, and not just any fork. The stakes at this fork were higher than choosing between Taco Bell and David's Burgers wearing the white shirt or the green one. I sensed eternity was at stake at this fork, so I must choose wisely. So I sat cross-legged under a shade tree and took some time at the fork. My choices were clear One road appeared wide and smooth. Most people who passed by chose it. The other road was narrow and from what I could see looked a bit treacherous. Not many were choosing the narrow road, but should I? Four fellows came my way up from the wide road and they chatted me with me for a minute. Having trouble deciding which road to take, one of them asked, well, I'm thinking about it, I said. My name is Pilgrim, Who, who are you? And they told me their names were ego, lust, procrastinate, and pretender. And they were full of advice. Take the wide road. It's smooth. It's popular. Most folks take it. Come on down the wide road with us. We'll show you the way, and we'll keep you company. But, but where will it take me? What's at the end of the wide road? The end, procrastinate asked, 
you're too young to worry about the end. You've got lots of time. Hey, live for today, my friend. Live for today. Well, I want to live for today, but I'm also concerned about tomorrow. You four go on. I want to think about it a little more, and if I choose to walk the wide road, I'm sure we'll meet again. Oh, don't worry, Pilgrim Ego chimed in. We will meet again. So they headed down the wide road, and I slumped back down at the base of the tree, weighing my options. Others passed by, most choosing the wide road. Maybe, maybe I should too. So I stood to my feet, I dusted off the seat of my pants and was ready to take my first step down the wide road when suddenly I heard someone over my shoulder running up the narrow road to the fork. I, I'm glad I caught you, he said, just, just a little breathless. Would you come walk the narrow road with me? I, I turned my head to see a man dressed in white. Uh, you are? Uh, my name is Good News. What's yours? I'm Pilgrim. Well, come walk the narrow road with me, Pilgrim. Why the narrow road, good news? Because the wide road leads to destruction. It's popular, it looks inviting. But don't be deceived by its looks. It leads to disaster. And your last step will drop you into the abyss of hell from which there is no exit and no return. It's not the road for you, pilgrim. Come walk the narrow road with me. It's not easy, but it is an adventure that leads to life and to the city of God. Well, who is this God? Good news. Well, he is your creator. He is the lover of your soul. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins, and then he raised Jesus up from the dead on the third day. He is a living Savior, and anyone who will put their trust in Jesus receives forgiveness of sins, abundant life, eternal life. Come with me, pilgrim. Follow Jesus and walk this narrow road that leads to life. It can be a great adventure. Good news went on to tell me more about Jesus. And my heart was warmed and I, I wanted to know Jesus. It made sense. Uh, oh, okay, good news. I choose the narrow road. I want to walk the road that leads to life in the city of God. So I knelt and I prayed, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. You gave your life for me. I, I give my life to you. I, I want to follow you on the narrow road there's much I don't know. There's nothing you don't know. Please, give me strength to walk the narrow road that leads to life. Good news helped me up from my knees. I felt, uh, felt different. I was different. I was forgiven free. So I dusted off the knees of my pants. I took a deep breath. I said, let's go. Bless you, my brother, said good news. From now on, you will be called Christian because you have trusted Christ and have decided to follow him. But, but a word of warning, as you begin your journey on this narrow road, be alert. The road has dangers. You're gonna encounter circumstances and people who will try to persuade you to leave the narrow way and to walk the wide road that leads to destruction. And there will be times when Satan that dragon, an enemy of God, will try to sift you like wheat, steal your joy and your faith and, and destroy you. Will I, have any, will I have any help when things get tough, I asked? Yes, Christian, dress for success. Put on the full armor of God. You're gonna need every piece. The armor offers defense against Satan's schemes and snares and, and the armor equips you to take ground from that devil through serving Jesus and sharing the gospel of peace with those who don't know Jesus. So, so put on the armor, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, shoes designed for the rugged terrain of the narrow road, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and, and put on all prayer too. Well, I have to walk alone. No, Christian, walk closely with church. She will be a faithful companion to you along the way. Stick with her. Walk always in her company. She will help you if you let her. Well, good news spends most of his time right there at the fork in the road. 
So he sent me on down the narrow road that leads to life and I wasn't just a few steps in when I linked up with church. I was baptized in Holy River and we headed down the road together. And I noticed as I began the journey that there were some on the narrow way who seemed stuck. They were kind of lounging on the side of the road as if they were at a rest stop. And I also noticed that they didn't seem to have the kind of joy that that I was experiencing. I didn't join them. Jesus doesn't sit around. I wasn't going to sit around. Jesus is on the move and, and, and I was going to be on the move too, following him and not let those lazy loungers discourage me and to make the most of each day looking forward to the city of God. But after a while in the journey, I began to struggle. You see, along the narrow road that leads to life, there are these access ramps that lead back to the wide road and beside the ramps are billboards advertising the old ways of the wide road. I wrestled with temptation. I wrestled with what had been my pet sins and I I began to understand why Jesus said this narrow road is hard and few walk it. Discouraged, one day I sat down by an access ramp to the wide road to think about these things and, and who should appear by my side but procrastinate. One of the four that had met me at the fork. He asked me, he said, how's it going, Pilgrim? You look a little blue. I'm I'm okay, I said, but my name is no longer Pilgrim. It's Christian. I I met a man named Good News, and he told me of Jesus in the narrow way, and I I gave my life to Jesus, and I've chosen to walk the, the narrow way. Then why the long face, Christian? Is the narrow way not so right for you as you first thought? You know, it's never too late to come on over to the wide road. It's just just over the hill. Uh, I don't know. Well, maybe you decided too quickly on the narrow way, Christian. Come on over to the wide road for a while. If you don't like it, you got plenty of time to get back over to the narrow road. Don't get me wrong, procrastinate. I like the narrow road. There's joy here. I've got... I've got friends here. The narrow road leads to the city of God and that wide road ends in destruction. Oh, there you go again, talking about the end. It's a long road. You're going to have plenty of time to get off the road before the end. Well, that's a good point. I am young. I I should have plenty of time. What, what, What would it hurt? What would it hurt to just slip over there, check out the wide road for a little while? I can always find my way back to the narrow road. Procrastinate? I think I'll go. Now you're talking, Christian, you got plenty of time. But as I stood to walk the way with procrastinate, I dropped my sword. And when it hit the ground, it became the Bible. And when I reached to pick it up, it was open to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, that says, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation. (laughs) What? Wow. God's way of throwing a bucket of cold water in my face. What am I doing? I I can't go with you, procrastinate. Jesus has saved me, and he's called me to walk the narrow way, and in his name, I'm sending you away. And procrastinate frowned and stomped on up to the wide road, shaking a bit, and yet relieved, I turned back to the narrow way and I saw my good friend Church standing by. She told me she had prayed for me that I would not fall and that she rejoiced to see me still walking the narrow way. But I must have come close, too close, to going back to the wide road, so close that procrastinate devised a plan. As Church and I were walking along the narrow way, one day a third person joined us. He looked familiar. He'd been one of the four back at the fork that tried to get me to walk the wide road. His name was Pretender, and we visited for a little while, and he told me he was glad that I'd chosen the narrow road. Pretender said, the only reason I offered you advice to go the wide road is because I didn't want to hurt the feelings of my friends. He told me I looked good on the narrow road. The narrow road appeared to be wearing well on me. I enjoyed his company. In fact, we became fast friends as we walked the narrow road together, but one day... Pretender started up an access ramp that would take him back to the wide road. Where are you going, I asked. That'll, that'll lead you back to the wide road. I, I know. I walk both roads. Why don't you come along with me? 
But the wide, look Christian, the wide road is not as bad as your friend church makes it out to be. I find that it's better to go back and forth between the roads. It adds variety to life and you get the best of both worlds. Why have it one way when you can have it both ways? Hmm, sounded like solid logic to me. So in spite of church's encouragement for me to stick with the narrow road, I followed pretender back to the wide road. What a mistake. The wide road, first it felt so risky, so fun. But there's a lot of hurt there. There's a lot of confusion and depression, lostness and evil, and, and those poor folks they don't have Jesus to lean into. And, and let me just say this, Pretender was not the same person on the wide road that he'd been on the narrow road. He was no different than lust, procrastinate, or ego. All the time I walked with him, I felt empty, all of a sudden very self-centered and ashamed. I realized that I'm trading diamonds for dust. And after walking with Jesus on the narrow road, nothing else, could, nothing else could satisfy me now. I mean, this great adventure of the narrow way, living uh, my experiences on the wide road seemed so small and so cheap, so artificial. Even the sins I once enjoyed didn't make me happy anymore. So I hurried back through the thorns and the briars of purging forest and slogged my way through the slew of despond to the narrow road. And I arrived bruised and nicked up, but okay, maybe a little wiser. And there was my friend, Church. She said she'd been praying for me. And I said, can you explain to me a man like pretender? And then quoting Jesus' words from the Bible, Church said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. And church went on to admonish me that true believers, all true believers endure to the end, and that we cannot have it both ways. Church was becoming a better friend than I first thought. Well, it was a good journey. The encouragement and the support of good friends, peace, joy, the pleasure of knowing God, serving God, walking with Jesus, abiding in his word, worshiping with his people, doing things that really matter, things that have impact that lasts forever. My journey on the narrow road took me to those wide road ramps, and at every ramp I had opportunities to share Jesus with wide road travelers who need him. The narrow road took me to the poor and the outcast, the hurting, and even a not-so-nice neighbor, people I would have never gone to if I hadn't followed Jesus there. My journey on the narrow road also helped me get outside of myself, learn how to love people who were kind of hard to love, and learn how to forgive people who hurt me. It was a good journey. It was rich with variety and challenge and scenery. Sometimes I was ridiculed by these by these wide road followers and, and sometimes I was, I was even wounded by my narrow way friends. It wasn't easy to walk this road, but it was part of it. And I learned in my journey how big God is and how small I am, how deep his grace, how wide his love, what amazing things God can do. But I still had my struggles. That old scoundrel lust continued to beckon me, beckon me to come on, follow the wide road at those many access ramps along the way that would lead me back to the wide road. Lust was there to lure me, tempting me, seducing me to worldly power, sexual immorality, greed, and the like. And the fourth of those friends, the one named Ego, he enticed me to evict Jesus from the throne of my life and put myself there. My needs, my wants, my agenda, my will. It's all about you, ego said. You, 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 do you. It wasn't easy to turn away from the seduction of ego and lust. They appealed to my baser nature, which still lurked around in my life. But with the help of all prayer and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God and the encouragement of my good friend, Church, I, 
I won more battles than I lost. Jesus was increasing in my life. I was decreasing. And Paul's words to the Galatians were ringing true for me. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But not all my struggles had to do with the flesh. In the narrow way, I faced the same troubles that people in the wide way face. I faced sickness and sorrow and grief and pain. I, I, I did my share of suffering on the narrow way. There, there were times along the narrow way when even my good friend Church let me down. I mean, she isn't perfect. She's, she's a fellow struggler along the narrow way. And yet, even at her worst, I still saw little glimpses of Jesus in her. So as I walked through the flames of these heartaches, I grew to understand the refining fire of God who, like a potter, use these experiences to shape me and pinch me and scrape me and mold me and to be more like Jesus and ready me, to ready me for residence in his wonderful city. Well, by now, time had passed and I could see on the horizon the light of the city of God. It was just, just out there. All that stood between me and the city was the valley of the shadow of death and living river. I was almost home. But as I neared this last access ramp that could take me to the wide road, ego, lust, procrastinate, and pretender ganged up on me. They blocked my path. They sneered and they said, turn back. Out of my way, I said, take your lies back to the wide road. Go join your father, the devil, and wait for your own destruction because as for me, I have chosen Jesus. I have chosen life. Well, no sooner were those words out of my mouth than those four friends, those siblings of sin, morphed into a single creature and he looked like a dragon and on his chest was written the name Destroyer and he blocked my path to the city of God. He roared, if you would go to the city of God, you must pass through me. And the dragon, who is Satan, began to hurl at me his fiery darts. I raised the shield of faith and, and caught them there, but the onslaught was so great that he wounded me. I tried to fight back, but I was growing weaker by the moment. And then in one final fiery advance, he moved in for the kill. He threw me to the ground. I hit with such force that my sword fell from my hand just out of my reach. He towered over me, ready to destroy me. I despaired. I thought, all all is lost and then he reached down with those dragon claws he grabbed me by the breastplate of righteousness he pulled me close to his face and staring at me with those beady fiery eyes he said you are mine so much for the road that leads to life where's your God now Christian I'm going to destroy you before you reach the city and then he threw me down and rolled his head back in this cackling demonic laughter but at that moment, something happened he did not know. Because when he pulled me from the ground, I saw over his shoulder a glimpse of the city of God. And my heart was strengthened. And, and through all prayer, I asked Jesus for the spirit of power. And then as Satan plunged at me with his killing approach, I reached for the sword, which is the word of God. I plunged it into his breast and said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the dragon reeled back on his heels, his beady eyes now wide with shock. And then with a surge of spiritual power, I leapt to my feet like a ninja. And with one final thrust of the sword, I pierced him through the heart and declared, for in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and, and Satan groaned and spread his dragon wings and flew away, never to bother me again. Well, I caught my breath, dusted myself off, and I went down the hill into the valley of the shadow of death. It is dark, foreboding, but I had no fear. My shepherd Lord led me through. His rod and staff, they comforted me. He took me to the river bank. He, he helped me cross uh, in, over into the city of God and the river was raging. But the, 
the bottom was sound. You've done, you've done well, faithful servant, he said. And then with a big bear hug and a broad smile, he added, welcome home. Inherit a great reward and enter into the joy of eternal life. And the city, oh, oh, the city. Holy smokes, what can I say about the city? Eyes not seen, ears not heard, the mind cannot conceive the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Even adjectives like, like magnificent and breathtaking. They blush with embarrassment and slink away saying we are not worthy when used to describe that city and the struggles that had seemed so hard for me on the earth side felt on the heaven side as a sister saint once said like one, in, one night in an inconvenient hotel. I was home, home, forever home, which as another narrow way walker said, is chapter one of the great story which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, and in which every chapter is better than the one before. So, which road are you walking? The wide road has its appeal, but it's not the road for you. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Follow Jesus on the adventure of the narrow way. Stick with the church. When you stumble and when you fall, get up and start walking again and always keep an eye on the city of God because there is no better place on earth than the road that leads to heaven. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for calling us and empowering us to walk a difficult road, but a road that leads to life. Forgive us when we take the easy way, when we take the self way. Instead, draw us close to you today. Save somebody today. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Which road are you on? Tried to paint them for you as best I can. Which road are you on? Get on the narrow road, it's not too late. Come to the narrow road. Believe the good news. Come to the narrow road. Come to the church. Put your faith in Jesus. If you've wandered, come back. Prodigal, come home. You'll be received with open arms. I invite you to respond to whatever Christ is doing in your life. There'll be ministers here at the front to visit with you and counsel with you, help you make the decision the Lord is leading you to make. If you're online, text the word ACTION to 94000. You'll have links in which you can tell us what God's stirring in your life. But you respond uh, as, you, as you answer God's call. Which road will you walk? Let's stand together as we sing, you respond as God moves in your life.